Hey guys, welcome back to the Alabunaga show. It's been a very, very long break, but we are back and then uh, we will continue. Anyway, today with me in the hot seat is two of the hottest couple in town, the most talked, you know, like... Uh, so, Manula Mukte, Tia Taijun La Namase, you see everywhere, newspapers, social media, you know, print media, everywhere, you get to see them, and we're so privileged that we got to interview them, you know, uh, probably their first interview after, you know, being Mr. and Mrs. So, without further delay, I would like to welcome Mrs. and Mr. Sanampuri. Hi. Hey, thank you, thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> thank, <laughs> you. thank you. Good to see you after so long. Finally, <laughs> we've been planning this for so long, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yeah. finally it's happening. But I think it's happening at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, I've been running after you guys for a year or more. Yeah. Yeah. So now everybody knows it's not easy to get celebrities. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, congratulations once again. Thank you so uh, much. The whole uh, India is talking about you guys. The whole world and the blessings with you guys. So yes, how do you feel now after being married? Somehow it is different from, you know, I mean, before we got married, we were like, you know, we felt it's going to be the same, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. it's just a celebration and then it's going to feel the same. But there's something that has changed, which we haven't fully recognized. And uh, but it feels different for sure. People are telling us that, you know, you guys seem more free, more open uh -huh. and you guys are looking happier. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's so many things. And I think it's going to take some more time to adjust to this. And but it definitely feels Amazing. Mm -hmm. I think more like, you know, a lot of people think that marriage is for like the societal keep up. Mm -hmm. I think initially we also believe that it is for the societal keep up in terms of yeah. like having the celebration and trying to keep up. But I think uh, there has been a change in terms of being spiritually elevated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very personal feeling as to how it, it feels is. to call someone your whole, like your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that feeling was really uh, liberating and on its own a very powerful thing that I got to experience after getting married. But uh, like I said, um, though it may have been for the, uh, initially it may have been for the societal keep up mm -hmm. and in you know, a whole celebration, mm -hmm. but we did enjoy it all throughout the process. Oh, it was super, super tiring. And you know it, you've been uh, there from the very beginning, <laughs> try <laughs> taking care of most of the things to make sure that things are seamless and thanks to you for yeah. making it happen. So I think it has been a very liberating journey and uh, thank God that we had a successful marriage. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, all glory to God. The, the, everything went fine, everything was smooth and I'm sure everyone were blessed, you know, watching you guys coming, attending the wedding. Now, I, this is personal, but uh, did you ever thought about like having a small wedding? Why did you have like such a big exactly wedding? Exactly yeah. what I was going to talk about. Yeah. So we were discussing and, you know, it was always her dream to do a big wedding. Okay. And, okay. you know, something I never even thought of. For mm. me, it was like, you know, you know how men are. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, just go to a place, just get all the people that you generally, uh, you know, connect Destination with. Wedding Destination wedding. Mm. Destination wedding. Or just, you know, keep it minimal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And mm. then, you know, we are even like, you know, let's just wear night suits. That's the theme of the wedding. And, you this know. This is why I didn't make you yeah. plan the wedding. I'm just uh -huh. saying, you know, but yeah. the thing is. After this happened, I realized the importance of this because I think this can happen only once, yeah. which is getting all the people that you love and the people that love you together mm -hmm. because they're also, all of them are meeting each other for the first time. Yeah. And so many of them connected so well, it felt like a celebration when I was walking down the aisle, which you usually say for girls, but yeah, I was walking down the aisle. Mm -hmm. yeah. aisle. I saw all my, my brothers, my friends, it just, I felt so emotional because, you know, all the memories started to play in my head wow. with everybody. I'm like, it was too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't take it. And I, I'm sure later when the video comes out, you'll see that I, I'm tearing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But definitely it was special. I don't think we would have experienced this, any of these things, these feelings, if we did something small. small. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, small. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is, even me, when I was getting married, I, I, I wanted to have a small affair, to be honest, even me. <laughs> But the whole family, and yeah. this is part of our culture, right? Yeah. They were like, yeah, no, yeah. no. But, you know, I can also relate to you because, you know, there are a lot of blessings, you know, people coming and just praying over you. Even mm. that is huge, right? Yeah. The whole congregation, like thousands of people coming, praying for you. And we believe in the power of prayer. Yeah. Now, coming to the power of prayer, there are a lot of um, 
accusation there was speculation in social media people mm-hmm. were like oh kaka is like marrying a non christian and for like in nagaland it's such a big deal you know so uh would love to know uh because for those who don't know you converted you baptized and you know and that's why we did this holy matrimony also if not it was not possible yeah. in the first place yeah. so can you share about your faith and the, the, the how did it all happen and yeah, all, yeah. definitely um can i uh, yeah, speak can before speak. he does yeah sure so um when i did meet sanam for the first time mm-hmm. um he uh Not very long after we started dating is when he proposed to me. Mm-hmm. And he asked me what kind of a wedding would I like. Okay. <clears throat> so I think that is kind of like the starting stage of all of this that happened. Okay. Uh so I did mention to him that I have always dreamt of a big wedding where all my families and people that I love are gathered and uh I love the idea of walking down the aisle. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um he mentioned that, "Oh, okay, so that's what we will do." And so uh we we spoke about it and uh at that time of course you know <laughs> being never married before that I had no idea that there were a lot of restrictions and rules yeah, to it okay yeah. So uh he came to Nagaland to basically ask for my hand to my parents, parents. and then uh my uh, parents did mention that um it is a beautiful thing that you guys are planning to get married but um uh, if you guys are willing for a white wedding mm-hmm. then there is a thing as we believe in our uh naga tradition and even being christians mm-hmm. that uh you have to be christians mm-hmm. so uh i kind of snapped back and i was like oh then I, because i didn't want to impose him for anything at all mm-hmm. and we said uh that day and uh, we had a conversation about it and he told me okay so do i have to convert for the wedding to happen and then i said no you don't have to <clears throat> It's all right. We don't have to do the white wedding. We will celebrate two cultures together. And so I just told him to take some time and think about it, process. And I just told him we don't have to. Mm-hmm. He thought about it for a day or two, and then he comes back to me and he says that, "You know what? We will do it." And I wow. said, "Uh, well, it's not so important, you know, because again, you know me being a Christian and my faith in God is ardent. It it's 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 for me mm-hmm. but i'm not here to impose it to anybody mm-hmm. even if it means imposing it to my love mm-hmm. you know so i was like you know it's okay at the end of the day our union is what matters mm-hmm. i don't think um mm-hmm. i would want to impose that on you and it's absolutely up to you mm-hmm. and so he said you know what we will do it and uh so he was like but i don't want to do it for the heck of it mm-hmm. and as i remember he mentioned that he was almost an atheist in terms of not uh following any religion mm-hmm. before that mm-hmm. so he wanted to know about more about where i am from like how my religion has um kind of like well, how i've incorporated that into my uh, quality of life right wow. so he kind of like picked it up and kind of um uh, inculcated that into his understanding started mm-hmm. uh, reading the bible a little bit more okay understood the way of life <clears throat> and the wow. way of christian life mm-hmm. then he decided one day that okay i will convert and uh, he always believed in one god however and he all he believed is i'm doing this for love mm-hmm. and yes. uh, yeah yes. i'm sorry i i need to because yeah. it needs to come from me i feel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh the thing is i wasn't born like you know religious that mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. that you know i'm born and now i'm i'm by default a hindu or a christian mm-hmm. or a muslim or a sikh or any other religion i did not choose any of that right mm-hmm. but for me what's most important is you know since the beginning of my life i've always uh been attracted to love wherever there's love that's where i go so what happened i've always since my school days you know i've had a lot of people from the uh, friends from the north northeast mm-hmm. and there's something about the northeast and you know the the warmth the the com- the way they celebrate mm-hmm. you know communities you know it's something i've always wanted mm-hmm. and i felt this the, the unity there's so much love that i've seen which i actually on to be honest i did not see enough of that uh from where i was mm-hmm. and i grew up in delhi and uh, <coughs> delhi has its delhi also is it has its own charm but mm-hmm. the thing is that's not what i was looking for and i didn't never felt comfortable being there mm-hmm. so coming here i just felt so accepted mm-hmm. you know felt so loved and the thing is i go wherever there's love and that's that is my aim you know even i want to give love to everybody as much as possible 
So if people think that I've done uh, something wrong by converting, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. I am just doing, it's a very personal choice. I don't think anybody even has the right to tell me mm -hmm. that you know, you, what you're doing is wrong. Because when it comes to doing wrong, everybody has done something wrong and then you know, there is no end to it. Mm -hmm. What people miss out on is, you know, we forget to accept everybody because mm -hmm. that acceptance comes only when you have love in your heart. Yeah. And when someone is blaming someone for like, accusing someone of like, you know, you should not have done this, you have changed, you have converted, you know, mm -hmm. that mindset comes, it does not come from love. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's all right, I'm not blaming anybody again for being that way. Mm -hmm. Because I'm only praying that they, you know, somehow, you know, start feeling the love inside them to understand that everything is the same at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We're all the same, it's all about being with each other. Mm -hmm. Beyond religion, beyond anything else, it is about being good to each other. You know, and this is something that I felt was, you know, very, very strong in Nagaland, mm -hmm. really strong. And everybody, the way they love, you know, how they say, when you marry, you marry the whole state. Mm -hmm. And I feel it, you know, that, mm -hmm. and I felt that love. So anybody who still has a problem with how I live, it's fine. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. something that you feel. Yeah. I'm saying you come spend time with us and I'll make you sure that us. you will be loved by <laughs> yeah. us. You'll always be loved by us and we'll feed you. We'll make sure you have the best time ever. Awesome. And you'll just have the best time of your life. Yeah. So um, wow. I, I personally think it's a very controversial topic as yeah, you is. know it. Yeah, yeah. So we do not want any religious clashes. All we yeah, want yeah. to put forward our idea is basically that uh, we did it as a personal choice, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. because of any um, force, not by force. Um, everything that we have done is uh, something that we've done for love and out of personal choice. Mm -hmm. And our faith in God is very personal. Let me tell you this yeah, again. Yeah. Anybody who is born a Christian by default, I, I, I don't think some people have even found Christ. Yeah, even true. being born as a Christian, you know. So I feel like uh, the spiritual journey and to find God on its own is a very personal journey that nobody else as a third person can ever even speak for. Sure, yeah, so yeah. this is why I think this judgment is very uh, bland mm -hmm. and it has no base to it. So I, 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 I don't, um, you know, I don't stand for any religious conflict. Mm -hmm. Well, what we have done, we are happy. We have done yeah, all for love as as, yeah. and uh, yeah. And, it's um, a personal choice as you say, yeah. you know. And I, I would just say yeah. that I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed to have a person who stand by my side mm -hmm. through everything and I think that's on its own speaks a lot about yeah. humility and compassion. Mm -hmm. And if at all he's been able to do that for a love, there should not be any religious conflict is what I feel. Yeah. We are so happy and yeah, at the end of the day, um, you know, Christianity is all about love again. Yeah. Jesus teaching is all about love yeah. and you found a love. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, now let's move on to the next question. Uh, this is going to be very interesting because I, I see again a lot of, so I'm picking all these questions from uh, the social media and also there are a lot of, again, like speculation that you guys flirted, you ditched your ex and then you got married, <laughs> you came together, you know, Zucho was dating that guy and you, that Nepali girl and then you guys left them and then you came together. Is it true that you... Firstly, reached? thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to speak the truth finally. Okay. Okay. Wow, okay. that was that started off that. like a yeah. punch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. You want to go first? Begin. Begin. You begin. Oh. Yeah. Then I'll begin. <laughs> so yes, no, no, no. Uh, you ditched that guy, uh, the, this, this the guy from UK, and then you you got married. Oh Lord, a guy from UK sounds very specific. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but let me tell you one thing: that everything that people like to talk are the kind of assumptions that that they like to bring forth, mm -hmm. so that they can demean people. Okay. Um, the truth is. None of us did any of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think we also have the capacity to do that to anybody. Uh, or at least to ourselves, we know that we are not at least capable of hurting people in that level as people are accusing mm -hmm. us of so many things. Cheating, definitely never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> never cheated on anybody. Uh, when we met, we were absolutely uh, broken-hearted singles. Yes. <laughs> okay. Of okay. course, because oh. um, uh, unfortunately, we both got cheated upon. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the fact. That so, the fact. Uh, oh. and we don't blame anybody. And in fact, we're actually very happy that we got we are united now. We don't have complaints, yeah. or we're really not like insulting anybody. No, or anything. no, no. The thing is, if they didn't make the mistake, then we, we would not have met. So we are grateful. Yeah. This thing. yeah. So. <laughs> so again, uh, I think uh, we 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 still think that there are great people, except mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it did not work out because. Uh, yeah. They had different uh, purpose in life, mm -hmm. perhaps, and okay. it had to go the ugly way. Uh, so yeah, when I met Sanam, of course, uh, we were absolute singles. We <laughs> okay. none of us uh, are capable of 
you know cheating anybody we both have that level of integrity for sure mm-hmm. that everybody knows mm-hmm. all our friends the families everybody knows the kind of people we are okay and uh you know what happened was the fact that people started blaming us yeah. Yeah. for that, things that we never did mm-hmm. that was very unfortunate you know the fact that they said that you know i uh, ended up like and i ended the relationship because i met her and <laughs> then i was like oh my god then i cheated on her with <laughs> Huh? <laughs> I'm like, what? Oh, how? You know, oh, it's shit. so easy to assume any story, yeah. and one person just speaks it out. Yeah. Another person is like, seriously, and mm. then it becomes a story. Uh, yeah. Chinese begins. whisper. Yeah. And, then, and that becomes the truth, and then the b- books will be written about it, mm. and then people will read, and that becomes the ultimate truth for the people. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the whole thing was made up, uh, uh, a made up lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's how the world works. The whole world is working yeah, on a lie. True. Yeah. that's why we were like it's okay we believe in god mm-hmm. we believe in justice it may not happen now mm-hmm. even if it takes 100 years it's all right because we're not here to prove anything to anybody mm-hmm. we are here for ourselves to love and our intention was never to put anybody down mm-hmm. you know people were like and it was very difficult for us to honestly hold back and not tell people what the actual truth was yeah because even our families even our families we did not tell so many people because again we were protecting them still yeah i feel you know that. that we don't want them to be judged because we know how what it feels like to be judged mm-hmm. we just never wanted other people to go through it and that's why we chose to protect but the thing is it went on for way too long yeah. and thank you for that i mean i had a lot of um, i did struggle a bit yeah. it was and, difficult uh, i'm sure sanam struggled equally but for him he's been in the limelight for a long time and he you know the kind of attention that he gets i wasn't used to it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of course i've been a prominent face in nagaland but outside nagaland it was a bit yeah. uh, you know it was very new to me you know i would get death threats i would get um, really? people telling mm-hmm. me that you know wherever you are we we will make sure we come and kill you wow and it's very unfortunate that the social media platform is just a mm-hmm. place for everybody to mm-hmm. rant out their day like you know some people maybe just saying because they've had a bad day people might be just listening to a, like a random rumor and they might assume because people are so impressionable people's yeah. minds are so yeah. impressionable that you hear one thing and you try to exaggerate that put masalas into it and then trying to you know make a whole situation out of it so what happened was uh, with me i did tackle with it peacefully in the beginning mm-hmm. it went on for months yeah. then it became a year also you know yeah. then it did yeah. take a toll on my mental health as well and i was really really struggling with it mm-hmm. um Sorry, we man. did speak about it but unfortunately i feel like it's all about responsibility mm-hmm. at the end of the day i think we both took responsibility in coming out clean yeah. so i don't think the fact that we even came out with our relationship in the beginning was i would say it, we 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 also came out peacefully it was because we had no regrets in our hearts mm-hmm. and we knew exactly what we were doing and that we were for each other mm-hmm. and this is why we came out so peacefully we were not silent like mm-hmm. you, you said it might take 100 years but i don't think it'll take 100 years after after this no, podcast I mean, <laughs> people will know I now would say, uh, now yeah it's I already. would say it's very unfortunate that, that we even have to talk about it because yeah. the fact yeah, that true, you're true, asking true, us true. is yeah. because it has really like reached out a true, lot of true, people true. it goes everywhere you know? people you know it put us in a very very bad and uncomfortable position yeah. and yeah. we felt like you know we were being bashed for something we never did yeah. yeah you know and that does not feel right and that sustaining for so long still even after we put out a music video just now the comments are still about that people are writing thing uh, like crap about me and yeah. i'm now after the point you know it if people think you know it should say it's it shouldn't bother you it's in the past no. you know you come and be in our position and, yeah. and see yeah, yeah it takes a toll on our yeah. head as well it's, it's, it's so easy and, to say and i'll, so I'll add one it. more thing one more thing to it it's really funny one of the funniest rumors that i've heard is that um uh i'm sorry i just want to mention no, okay. that no uh, it's okay he um uh, someone left him because <laughs> he is a drunkard Um, he takes drugs <laughs> and uh what what was the other one that he uh, smokes a lot and uh so there's a, there's a lot i just that thought that this was so baseless rumor because let me tell you i've met uh people in my life my brothers drink okay i've seen them getting drunk and yeah. not a day i've seen him getting drunk he does not like alcohol he mm. doesn't smoke he does not have any bad habit he doesn't even that. cuss yeah. i think uh when like such rumors are so so baseless yeah, that okay. you put someone into such a vulnerable situation while in reality this person that you're talking about 
is actually quite the opposite. Yeah. So yeah, it's very sure. easy for people to assume certain things that you've heard on the internet just randomly. But when you get to know that person, like in person, yeah, yeah. it's 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 a different story. Yeah. And I, I was so, uh, I would say I was so disappointed to hear that. She like, went through a really hard time and I, I was going through the same, but I kept telling her, you know, just leave it because some things die down on their own. Yeah. Mm. You know, honestly, our lives are like, we are entertainment pieces at the end of the day for people, right? Mm -hmm. right. And our work here is to spread love through our music. Yeah. Mm. And that's what we're doing. If we are posting something personal out there, it's not to get validation and attention from people. It's not it's for us that. Expressing... It's just our expression to basically encourage people to love more and more. And mm -hmm. that is our intention. But obviously, people love to twist all of it for their own entertainment. Yeah, it's perspective. Yeah. Like, you know, I also have a personal account, like a private account where nobody has the access to it, where I just post the <laughs> pictures that I would have loved to. Uh, if I were not a prominent face, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's just only for my very, very close family <laughs> members. And it's more like a photo album for me, you know, okay. having Instagram posts and everything. It was never for validation or anything. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like an expression that one day you look back at these pictures and you'll remember because even the phone gallery, sometimes you tend to miss out on such things yeah, or memories, yeah. you know? Because I think all my childhood or school pictures are from the times that I uploaded in Facebook long ago. Mm -hmm. I look back at those and I'm like, I would not have had those otherwise. Yeah. So I feel like it's more like an expression and if you have the perspective that it is just a platform for you to it's, express it's it's sad you know like uh, for me I always say these people who are like commenting they, I, I really feel sorry for them to be honest you know where do you have time to do that right for you me like three of no. us where do you have time to go and bitch about people talk shit about people writing <laughs> taking out time yes okay fine I like an artist so I like Ed Sheeran I don't have time to go and or maybe I hate this artist I don't have time to go and do that yeah these people are like yeah. so jobless I mean I'm so sorry to say that you know they're jobless like and then I feel sorry for them and I, I would love to pray for them, you know. Yeah, Get I mean, a job. some of them have jobs too, but they're not happy at the jobs. Yeah, they're this frustrated. So frustrated. Yeah. The thing is, okay, before I continue with this, I just want to tell everybody, now that we have revealed the truth, mm. this does not mean that you have to attack them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's they, the truth. It's, it is the truth, but you don't have to judge them again. You know, they did what they did. People do these things out of being unaware about mm. themselves. They don't understand themselves. There is no love for... Uh, yeah. themselves and they, they don't even realize yeah. what is happening how they are damaging or hurting the other yes, person the other person yeah. and themselves in the process yeah, themselves. we'll yeah. recover you know because we know from our side we gave our all yeah, yeah? we gave our best we only loved but it's all right. But the main thing is please do not judge anybody that's the whole reason why we never wanted to put this out in public because our intention was you know just let them be it's their lives they'll sort it out you know we are not responsible for their mm -hmm. lives anymore but uh, so. There were times that, to be very honest, we were also disappointed at them. No, also. obviously we are all human at the end of the Definitely. day, you know, like no matter what, you said we are entertainment piece, but we are also human at the end of the day. And like, you know, sometimes I, you know, I I think both of us are the like, the personality who get bashed up most in Nagal and, you know, Zucho and me. Yeah. So even recently that uh, Lee and Renbeni's thing that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And like, I was being bashed right and left. And then yeah. when I, sometimes I write about it and people are like, oh, don't worry, you know, the tree with like more fruits get more stone. Come on, it's easy to say that, but we're also human. Whether I have fruits or not, if a stone hit me, it hurts, right? The same thing with same you. Thing. you know, I mean, people should, I mean, realize, I hope they can realize one day that, you know. I feel like it, it is sometimes it's unnecessary to keep on picking up at all the negative points. But when it comes too much, I, much, I think it's also important that we address it. We have to address it. So yeah, once we, we address to, we it and once yeah, we reveal yeah. it, I think it's for people to take it forward and um, have a perspective maybe. But I think our idea is basically just put forward the truth. The truth. Yeah. And after which, whatever follows up, it's okay. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I feel I like I find it important to address it. remember one thing. Sorry to cut you. Yeah. Uh, right? You spoke in English <laughs> and then I just saw the comments that time also like mm. the whole community was bashing her up. Oh, that was, yeah, that, that was really brutal. hurt me to be honest because I know her intention. I know what she wishes for Nagaland, her tribe, all tribes. Mm -hmm. Her intention has always been to unite everybody. Yeah. You know, if it's so easy for you to say, oh, how can you speak in English? Mm. You being from this tribe, you know, and I love all the tribes so much, okay? Yeah. I love Nagaland in general. He's more you know? Naga than I am. I, I yeah. am somehow, you know. Sanam <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, you know, if you have 
so, the whole point is to communicate with the people if you understand your message is delivered that is what matters it's yeah, not about true. the language at the end of the awesome. day yeah and about maintaining the culture the tradition she is doing giving her all and i know yeah. that she keeps on telling me just uh, you know wear this uh, the traditional, traditional clothes yeah. she keeps on giving me some stuff to wear i love to wear them yeah. you know but here's the thing if you have a problem with the language english or any other language which is yeah. not yours mm -hmm. then all the things that you're also typing in english saying how can she speak in english you, you don't realize you're yeah, typing in sense. english yeah okay the things you use <laughs> iphone get your own make your own iphones or whatever phones in your own place yeah. okay that is just to do with you where you just alienate yourself completely then mm -hmm. you know just open your mind open your hearts just be more accepting of people sure. mm -hmm. of someone's intention because i know what her intention is it's only love for the whole state for mm -hmm. the country for her tribe for everybody yeah. and that's what hurt me because knowing what she wishes for the people mm -hmm. and then the way people bash her you know, it did not make sense to me you know that day um i did speak in english as you you may have uh, yeah, sort of watched it already so of course i did and i did mention in the beginning that i cannot speak formal lota mm -hmm. and i'm sure a lot of people who speaks in their own dialect will understand or i don't know about the other languages but um lota especially we have a very different format to speak on stage mm -hmm. you know how nagamis also has a very formal language yeah, true, true. you have to put forward while you're speaking on stage so even lota has that so i do not know that formal language But while you can i speak right i can speak the normal, normal conversation yeah, yeah, normal i speak conversation. to my parents in lota And I'm that also is learning, by the absolutely, way. yeah. I'm learning. I understand quite a bit of it. <laughs> so it's absolutely fine uh, for me to have a normal conversation, but I did not want to make fun of the language while on stage, while I do not put it formally. So I thought the best language I can express my heart out will be English. And also that day before I went up on stage, I did meet uh, some people who had who were visiting uh, Nagaland for the first time, mm. and they were also experiencing the Lota culture for the first time. Yeah, so keeping in mind that there were also multicultural people there uh, in the crowd, it was not just the Lotas. Okay. Uh, keeping in, uh, that in mind, I thought that the best language would be the universal language yeah, that is yeah. English, and I would say that that is also one of the most comfortable languages I can speak in because I can express better when I'm speaking in English. So I thought that at, at the end of the day, my intention was to, uh, you know, deliver a message that was to be heart heartfelt, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of felt like I did justice to what I wanted to uh, say, mm -hmm. but um, you know, again, like I say, it is a perspective. A lot of people could have just taken the words out of it and felt it in their hearts yeah. and understood that oh, her intention was basically to deliver the message yeah. in the most peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, it was like, how can you be Lota and like not speak in Lota at all in a Lota function? And uh, let me tell you one thing that I've always had that experience growing up. How are you Lota? And you look so different. Mm -hmm. how Why are you uh, why are you wearing this traditional dress you don't even look lotha enough for it yeah, you know yeah, and i feel so like so this so. mindset needs to change mm -hmm. it, it, why aren't we more accepting yeah. let's say if there is someone who wants to be lotha why aren't we more accepting teach them the culture yeah uh, be more welcoming why are you alienating yourself from the from the things that we could have been great examples to you are actually telling people basically that you're not supposed to be us because we are horrible people and i feel like that perspective shift has to happen mm -hmm. it's not only with the lotas but i think the, every yeah, yeah. every other naga people we are uh, here mm -hmm. um i think the more inclusive we are the state will also grow beautifully true mm -hmm. you can easily keep a good balance of like keeping your tradition and your culture alive mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. connecting with the world yeah. you don't have nobody selling you to let go yeah. it's so beautiful in fact all the cultures all the we tribes we love it all, we embrace it every yeah, exactly and it's so beautiful i don't see any reason to not accept the world the way it is mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. even for a wedding like we lotas have a different kind of culture to yeah. you know to uh, perform uh, oh, rituals yeah. to perform mm -hmm. yeah. before the wedding um and honestly of course i was never told about anything so uh there's a storyteller from the village who comes and tell us about every ritual that happens mm -hmm. i got to know so many things about it this time about the culture about where mm -hmm. we are from how our ancestors have uh evolved themselves into where we are today mm -hmm. and i think modernization was so important that we inculcate few things from what are we are culturally rooted to and kind of like infuse it to our modern day mm -hmm. and take it in a peaceful manner like our idea is to take forth our culture forward in a peaceful manner while also remembering that this is where we are from right yeah. but we do not have script so because our tradition is more oral tradition that mm. i believe yeah. so i was thinking that you know if we are emphasizing so much on the fact that every uh, individual in nagaland should know about their culture 
and because we're indigenous tribes and it is important that we know our culture, mm -hmm. why don't we have uh, the education system where we inculcate that into the academical structure? Mm -hmm. Is what I thought. Because I was I was so enlightened by the whole process, you know, even I got to know so much about my culture only this time. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so important that I know that even as a kid. I was so important that I know about the different kinds of dresses, different kind of clothing pieces growing up. Mm -hmm. I never knew about it until one day the storyteller comes and tells me suddenly. Mm -hmm. So if this storyteller, if you know, we put a collective effort and change kind of like the education system, maybe inculcate into our and... academic uh, structure to it, I think a lot of kids growing in Nagaland will know about their roots as well as modernizing themselves with the medium mm -hmm. of education that we get mm -hmm. already. Yeah, I mean, I get what you where you're coming from. Yes, uh, in one way, I understand why they say that. I mean, yes, it's so important to know and speak. Yeah, but it's not that she don't she can't speak also because yeah. I personally know her yeah. and the, speak, she yeah. can speak Lotha. It's just that in that occasion she chose not to because she could not speak the formal. And then yes. in case if you make mistake speaking Lotha, then That's they'll make fun worse. of you. That's yeah. worse again. Worse, yeah. 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 So yeah, I'm not supporting anybody here, yeah. but but on the uh, the lighter note, I I love the way you say it. You know, they're making. You know they're uh, writing bad thing about her in, in English, English. <laughs> and even though um, or maybe even Lotha they're using English alphabet. Yes, Correct. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so you know, but at the same time, if you see the negative comments and the negative perspective is actually very small. Mm, yeah. The thing is in our in our heads, mm -hmm. in our, the way we see it, the negative comments magnify somehow. Yeah, you know, even if out of like to one thousand comments, there's like ten negative comments, we only think about think those of the ten. Tent, yeah. You know, and we're taking the other 990 comments for granted. And we sure. shouldn't do that because, yeah. you know, because I know, like, it feels, no, no. we somehow wish to change everybody. I, th I think that's, yeah. yeah, it's the example you are as an artist. Tomorrow you come and perform 10 songs. Mm -hmm. You do mistake in one song. We're talking about one song. Yeah. yeah. We won't talk about the nine songs. Yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, for me, I think the social media comments was not more, I mean, it did affect me, but not in the way that it she did fine, when yeah. people met me in person and actually yeah. told me, you don't even know Lotha, like, why? And literally Whoa. on my face, they're like, we're ashamed of you. The fact that you're, you're, you, yeah. you're a Lotha and you can't you're even speak. Sarcastic. So I responded to them in Lotha saying and that, what is it? I hope you know that I can speak in Lotha. And I also hope you know that there's a formal language which I was never taught. Mm -hmm. Because my parents don't speak in formal Lotha while they're at home. Growing up, I only heard the normal Lotha, which you use it to converse. Um, because, you know, there's certain words, I don't even know how to, how to explain, but there are many words that has supposed to be used formally on stage because yeah, it yeah. sounds I, better. I, 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 and I, even English, right? There is a language to it where you have to formally address true, people. True, true. So that is something I'm not very well trained at, right? Mm -hmm. So when people came and told me in person is when I was affected. And mm -hmm. I would say less to do with the social media yeah. scene. Yeah, I mean, see... It's not just Lotha with, the, with all the tribes in Nagaland. We we all go through this and all. And uh, they, when you bring Laurel, when you bring uh, fame for the community, mm. they will take credit. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. But when we tend to do some mistake, they will like, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's so sad. Now let's move it's on from easy. this toxic <laughs> topic. Now. Okay, now let's talk something interesting. Uh, a lot of people are curious. How did you guys meet? And all, you know, we we discuss about that the X thing. But okay, now let's go ahead. How did you meet? One second thing. We'll also talk about the song that you guys just released. So let's go to the first question. How did you meet? Who <laughs> approached first? Kaise hua pyar? So. You know, uh, I have a very close friend here, Vire. That's her. Vire. Uh, she's a singer. Wow. Viri. You're yeah. friends with Vire? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I've known her They've since like eight to nine years. Yeah. Oh, really? I think she's a big fan of you. Also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's such a good person. She's very a wonderful humble. person. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, because, you know, we we kept talking and uh, because when you follow somebody on Instagram. Right? From Nagaland. For, Huh? Yeah, from Nagaland. So oh, Nagaland. the yeah, algorithm yeah, yeah. just you works know, as such. The other profiles also keep popping up if we are liking her post yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Then it'll, yeah. it'll pop up, right? The so, algorithm, thanks to Instagram algorithm. Yeah, thanks to Instagram. <laughs> thanks to Viri. So, thanks to Viri. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, her profile would keep popping up in the middle, you know, from maybe 2017, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, once a year. Okay. You know, like that. And I... There was a faint memory of, oh, okay, oh, yeah, I've seen this person somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. I've seen then, this person somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So then, first, let me tell my perspective, then you have to tell your part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so then, uh, 2022, 
Okay. Uh, you know, so, okay, I'll go move back to 2021. In January, when I composed the song, Saath Rahe To Mere, okay. so I dreamt of this melody, which I spoke about at the wedding. Mm-hmm. Dreamt of this melody and I woke up to write the lyrics immediately. I'm like, this melody must mean something. And I woke up, I just sat on the piano and I was like, I need to, I need to figure this out right now. It, the lyrics, everything, I've never composed any song so fast. So it happened within one and a half, two hours. And since then, uh, I was like, okay, the initial plan was to sing alone, you know, like a solo song. Then I was like, no, actually, you know, this song sounds like, you know, it needs to be like a give and take, like a conversation between a girl and a boy. <laughs> so then I was just searching for uh, a, a female vocalist and I was really struggling to find the right tone, the right, you know, the throw, the ev- mm, everything texture. that can blend s- well with my voice. And I know this, I have a lot of singer friends, but I felt like I needed something different in this. And I kept searching, kept searching. Oh my God, it just wasn't work- working out. Okay. Then 2022, April, her profile popped up again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God, wait. Uh, some singing reel of hers. I'm like, oh my God, wait. I know she's singing in English, but... Maybe, you know, I like the tone and I love the way she sings her singing style. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly, I needed a bit of Western touch in the okay, song. Okay. So, then I, I just messaged her, your voice is really, really, high. like I literally got goosebumps mm-hmm. when I heard her voice. And and then I messaged her and then uh, asked her if, you know, we can connect for the song. I played her the song and I, again, I did speak about it at the wedding. She heard the song and then I realized, you know, just, I, I was very <laughs> straightforward about it. I said, I wasn't just searching for someone like you. <laughs> I was searching for you, you know, wow. and I felt it. And then she came to Bombay. She had to come to Bombay anyway mm-hmm. uh, to collect her certificate because she was, she studied at yeah, w- Wilson. She studied there, right? Yeah, Wilson College. Wilson College. She came, I picked her up at the airport and uh, then we just sat, we had conversations and the way we connected it just felt so familiar. Was it love at first sight? You know, it's it's very different, you know. It wasn't like a love at first sight. It's beyond that, I, I feel, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel love at first sight is still a very, you know, a physical thing. Lame structure. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Physical in the sense like, you know, the physical world structure. Okay. I'm talking in a more spiritual manner okay. where, you know, it felt... She's the one. Like the souls knew that we were supposed wow. to meet anyhow. Oh. You know, it, and we were connected through the dream itself, the way the song happened. If the song did not happen, I would never have a message. No. In the, you Rose know. Rose, right? Yeah, so... Uh, that happened and then we met and I'm like, you know, everything was so smooth and seamless. It never felt like, you know, oh my God. And that initial, in, initial infatuation, that was never the case. It mm. felt the way it feels even right now, mm. you know, felt like we've always been together. You know, we've always, we've always known each other. So those initial butterflies that you get in, oh my God, those, I feel that comes out of infatuation and yeah, like yeah. this expectation of like you know what if something happens and all those little excitements yeah mm-hmm. i'll be honest i'm getting that right now <laughs> okay and it's only increasing with time wow. because i feel with time i'm falling more and more in love with her <laughs> you know and so when we met it just felt so smooth and yeah that's when we started and we don't really have a date as to you know this is the day when i we, we started dating Mm-hmm. Because the day we met, it just felt like this is it. Mm-hmm. Without even, you know, consciously knowing that this is it. Yeah. You know, and we, and that's why this was a bit of a problem in the uh, beginning. Like, what is our date? You know, and she would be very disappointed with me about like... When did we start when dating? When did we start dating? I'm like, I don't know. How can... I, I really have yeah. no idea. Maybe the you know? day you text DM her. I guess so. Yeah, maybe so, the dream. Yeah, maybe <laughs> the dream. You know, for me, uh, when he texted me... The, how did you feel? Yeah, we want to know that. Yeah. So, uh, that's see, so the thing is, I've always been a fan of his songs. Mm-hmm. I've never really known him as a person mm-hmm. or very closely been associated with the kind of celebrity that he was, he is. <laughs> So I, I did not really know much about his life, but I always knew that the person, the, the singer of this song yeah. is a wonderful person uh, because the kind of song that he, he sings are the kind of songs I love to mm-hmm. sing. 
So uh, I've always been a fan of his, and when he did text me, I was really surprised, first of all. I mm. was, in fact, telling all my friends, oh my god, oh my god, he texted me, he texted me, okay? But um, the way he texted me was very, very kind. Mm. It was a lot of humility, you know? I think um, a person, after achieving so much, you know, there, there, there is a bit of a um, distance from the mm. general public. Generally, you keep and you have to, sometimes. But the way he approached me was very, very loving and very with a lot of emotions and a lot of humility, mm -hmm. saying that how much he loved my voice and, you know, um, the fact that he absolutely thought that my voice was a great match for the song that he has written. And I was really, really excited. And I, um, he asked for my phone number and we immediately connected over the phone and he sent me the song. And I just thought that that song was a very, very beautiful, beautiful uh, piece. Mm -hmm. I still I think it is a masterpiece. Um, it happens yes. to be one of my, it is the one, the favorite song. <laughs> um, so I just thought that, you know, when, when I heard that song for the first time, I thought that maybe later in the future, when I get married to anybody, wow. you know, I will dedicate to that person is what I thought. And that time we did not have any equation, like not no romantic equation yet, right? Mm -hmm. All I knew was it was a professional thing, a professional setup where um, I as an artist absolutely loved the song, but I felt the song that it was very emotional for me. And I heard the song and I, th I told him immediately like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this song with you because this is one of the most beautiful songs I've heard in some time. So um, I did tell that uh, I will be privileged if you think that I'm capable, but I will anyway, I'll practice the song, I'll kind of like mm -hmm. forward. That sound too. And we did have conversations after that. I think we texted for a few days after that. Mm -hmm. But there was still no romantic equation, you know. It was more like we will text about the song and uh, probably it was like once in a blue moon that we will text uh, in terms of like once in a week. Mm -hmm. And I would just tell him that like, oh, hey, I learned a song today. Is it sounding better? And uh, I had a lot of pronunciation issues in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I would tell him that, oh, I want to work on my pronunciation. Can you help me a little bit, you know? So this was a initial equation and then uh, then he said that it'll be lovely if we can meet and have a conversation about the song as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, then that's a perfect time. I'm going to Bombay to pick up my uh, graduation certificate because that's when I graduated as mm -hmm. well. And I had already booked my tickets by then. Oh, so I told him, I'm coming to Bombay, uh, so definitely we should meet and talk about it. So I went to Bombay and uh, the most I would say the cutest thing was he came to pick me up at the airport. And mm -hmm. uh, at that point, mm -hmm. I would not expect him to come and pick me up at the mm -hmm. airport, okay? And <laughs> and I saw him. I was too shy because I'm like, damn, first of all, I'm a fan. And then secondly, the fact that he came to pick me up was just a very, Kiko, uh, very, <laughs> yeah. I was very nervous, right? And I saw him, he was all shy. And that made me even more nervous. He was all shy. He was like, hey, hello. Um, <laughs> you know, he was like smiling. And I'm like, shit, I don't know what to do. And then, uh, of course, um, I had the funniest part, okay, I had a 25 kilo luggage yeah. <laughs> and he literally held it like a coolie and I'm thinking at the back of my head, oh my god, what kind of a, and at that point in my head, he's like, he's a celebrity, like, yeah, what right. kind of a, like, what, what did I make this person do, like a celebrity, literally holding my 25 kilo luggage. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember it to be a very funny, um, uncomfortable situation in the beginning, but uh, I think his humility outshined yeah. uh, the fact that he came all the way. And that was the first time he ever picked someone at the airport because he's starting yeah. to drive at that time. Yeah, I so, started driving in 2022. Yeah. yeah I, was, I never drove because of some confidence issue. Yeah. I was okay. too scared. So then yeah. I thought it was very, very sweet and special. But, you know, that was it. And then um, he dropped me at a hotel that I was staying. And mm. then uh, I was super, super hungry. As you know, uh, Nagan flights are never mm. uh, very easy or <laughs> very convenient. So we went for a dinner and um, we had like... A long conversation that day where I just felt like I could relate to this person so much because so many experiences in our lives were so similar mm -hmm. in terms of me even relating with my personality to the kind of person that he is yeah. I just feel like I'm a more stern person but the same person like a different version but you know the same mm -hmm. ideology the same perspective in life so there were a lot of things that were co common and I mm -hmm. just loved how he made me feel so vulnerable and uh, made me express the way I would have wanted to, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was a very special meet. The first meet was that. And then we continued speaking, but it was never, again, like I said, uh, like we mentioned, it was never a love equation or it was never a romantic equation in the beginning. It was more conversations and I just thought I found a friend in him. Mm -hmm. And we would just basically talk about the day. And then um, 
yeah, I don't know how it transitions later. Yeah. Um, I, I look at, I'm hearing the stories like you know divine connection you know it's all God bringing and yeah. you wrote a song for your future wife and then sang without even realizing that she's going to be your future yeah. wife you know it's it's yeah. very beautiful you know and uh, yeah with this we're moving to the next question yeah. okay uh, so uh, Sanam I just want to know one thing now you you are a Naga you know we have accepted you as Naga right now. <laughs> so uh, say something you like or admire about Naga culture uh, something that you really like about it is the way everybody's so united mm -hmm. everybody means literally everybody mm -hmm. and I love I just I mean I just love the way people are it's for me again it's the amount of love that I uh, receive, receive from here so that is all you know that's number one for me uh -huh. Unity. Okay. Well, we love you I mean see it's, it's not just because you're a celebrity it's because of your personality also the person you are you know and uh, for me also I mean we all talk when, when we always talk about you you're so humble you know like and you as a musician that's different you know but as a person you're such a beautiful person and we love you for that you know yeah more than the the, the celebrity status you know but we love you for the person you are now uh, kaka you know uh, for in nagaland uh, this is the same question i have been i, I asked earlier also marrying a non naga is a big deal for some people out here you know and you have been a influencer and a celebrity in nagaland you know I'm sure the, the pressure. So how did it cop up with that initially? I'm sure you got like, you know, oh, Naga nohi to inya. And from the family also, I'm, got, I'm sure. I'll be very yeah. honest. Um, initially, when I started thinking that I liked him, you know, I had that fear mm -hmm. that, oh my God, mm -hmm. I'm going to be put in a very vulnerable space where people are going to judge me. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is also why I kind of like telling, started telling myself that it's never happening. It's impossible. Uh -huh. You can never like him, nor can he, and you should never think about it. Because I think um, we, being in the society where everything is so structured and made to learn few things as a child, it ingrains in your head few things that ingrains in your head, and it scares the hell out of you when you grow up. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened initially, but, you know... I processed for some time and I understood, like, am I going to live my life for the fam uh, for the mm. society? Am I going to live my life for the family? Or am I going to live, am I going to look forward to my life where I will remember myself as having someone that I loved and I was completely fulfilled by the kind of emotions that we shared along the journey of life? Because mm -hmm. we are only here for a fleeting moment. We're yes. all going to die one day. Mm -hmm. So we either choose to live a life that we want, peacefully taking conscious right decisions, or we either try to only keep up with the societal standards and uh, be sad. Because mm -hmm. honestly, let me tell you one thing. I have seen a lot of people who have uh, kept up with all societal pressure and done everything right, but internally are very unhappy. Mm -hmm. I I'll tell you, it starts from my family as well. And I think that it's so important that we address it, that we have the right to choose the person that we love. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I realized that, you know, I'm not going to live for the society anymore. And this is my personal life. Mm -hmm. This is my personal choice. I don't care what the world has to say. I have accepted this person as mine. And I, I don't care even if I get bashed up for it. I'm going to go forward to it. Thankfully, my parents were very uh, supportive also. Really they, they loved him immediately. Uh, my mom asked me, um, how is he as a person? Because, you know, they have a big status and we're not so sure. And it is, I would say it's a... Uh, genuine uh, concern all I told my mom was like mama I wouldn't tell you anything you meet him in person mm -hmm. you'll know exactly who I'm talking about okay I never told my parents anything about him mm -hmm. so when he came and he actually introduced himself to my parents and got to know him a little better my mom came and told me it is true who, like I know mm -hmm. what you mean mm -hmm. so we have no objections from our end mm. you can take forward any decision that you want and, and no one, no that, one can hate him and the person he is man yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so i would say uh, it was a very beautiful process even yeah, if it yeah. means uh yeah. talking to our families or everyone was that the time like you came to my marriage or before that was the time he came to propose yeah, my family actually, yeah, okay, that was right. yeah. He came to my wedding yeah, and yeah. That's, that's when we connected <laughs> yeah so that time yeah. is when he came and proposed my family for me Ooh, yeah brave guy right? and <laughs> oh and <laughs> Were you I nervous? Say, like the day you met? No, right? Not, not like you know what you want. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, but uh, he was um, very considerate. Actually, by the way, uncle and you know, all, like family, you know, yeah. 
anybody like go kuch na wale na kala kala ka sath or everybody fell in love directly everybody just was so loving from the beginning my parents only yeah. told me one thing mm-hmm. uh will you will be very happy mm-hmm. uh well before they met him they're like will you be happy with this person mm-hmm. you know uh I said absolutely. This they said that's all we want. Yeah. That's all we want. Wow. Yeah. As long as you're happy, you think you're fulfilled in your heart, yeah. that's all we want. Because mm-hmm. beautiful. I think uh, my mom has been a very uh, my mom is a beautiful person, she but is. she's always kept up with people's expectation her whole mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. That's why I think there are regrets in her life <clears throat> that mm-hmm. uh, she wishes that she had done it differently. Mm-hmm. Oh she came and told me don't do things according to the society also. Wow. I think she also taught me how to break barriers and be happy and comfortable with myself. Mm-hmm. So I would I would say thanks to my mom yeah. for okay. inculcating that cool. in me. Yeah. But see, I mean you both like complete each other, you know, like you are that kind of thing. This is like the stern one and then you don't talk much she talks a lot so yeah. completely <laughs> to each other. Anyway, moving ahead like uh, what was the most challenging part of planning your wedding? Oh my the whole thing <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> but she is the one yeah. who was who had the vision for mm-hmm. the wedding mm-hmm. my job i felt was to, to support fulfill, her to yeah. fulfill <laughs> and i i hope i oh, did ev- amazing everything i could so <laughs> i think um, i could not have asked for a better partner in terms of supporting me you know like i said i had a vision as a kid to how to execute my dream wedding so was it Success. It was more than what I thought because I think everyone who attended the wedding told came personally to us and told that they could feel that it was a special wedding. Mm. It may never like you know the decor everything is a beautiful part of it but it is about the feeling and the ambience yeah, so that you create in the wedding. And we felt so emotional, so emotionally overwhelmed beautifully mm-hmm. that yeah. day. And I think that is a successful wedding I would it say. Is, it Because is. it doesn't matter how yummy the food is, how amazing the decor is or how amazing it's everything people. else is. Yeah. It's how collective people can yeah. get and bless us with their, mm-hmm. you know, thoughts you know, and emotions. It's a team, for example, like the whole team working together. So we also also, you know, automatically it just happened. I think we were meant to connect. Mm-hmm. Chose the people that you know including you did, yeah, including you you know you did everything with love yeah. you know you did everything out of love so every person who was involved in making the wedding successful uh just it was all about love from the beginning and, and yeah. we are also very grateful that you know every um every um people that we worked with uh they were all very uh, cooperative and very very nice you yeah. know yeah. starting from the Really I would well. say even the wedding designers mm-hmm. uh, the decor team favors yeah, Nagar favors Nagar I I always loved their work they did a tremendous job in executing the kind of Beautiful. you know work that I've wanted they did exactly what I wanted mm. and they were very specific about the placement of the flower pots and everything also mm-hmm. in fact you know, Oli who is also one of the uh, they had the whole favors now yeah. she would always come yeah. to me so I want to place this pot here do you agree like do you want that do you not want that i feel like that coordination was so important, important. in making yeah. it uh, you know successful and they were just amazing mm-hmm. and you were amazing with the sound Thank you. uh you and to me so many things my yeah. goodness Uh, well yeah. so many things so many things sound being one of them is <laughs> like to audio kind of speak yeah led transport hotel and what all yeah. you handle yeah yeah i love to hear so many things <laughs> no 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 but we have to thank you thank you man this. thank you pleasure pleasure yeah. I mean. so, one person i'd like to mention though is sanan mm. He yeah, son, uh, he's yeah. the one who shot the video the video yeah. 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 so he's done it amazing. he's such an amazing guy amazing. what a humble person and it's always fun to be around him yeah. and it's so much fun to yeah. work with him even during the music video shoot and even for the wedding again he is the yeah. one who yeah, shot yeah, yeah. the wedding so one word describe her in one word huh yeah just one word <laughs> oh uh, it's so many words okay, my goodness it was describe, so difficult to pick one. one word yeah just one word oh. it could be any word right yeah Pursue. love okay you oh it's so difficult because there's too many words Gara. i would say integrity okay you know? so, first uh the first thing that attracted towards her, what, what the quality uh, pure heart okay you yeah. same humility pure heart okay any quick advice for aspiring musician couples <laughs> musician couple 
Any, sorry? Any, any advice for, for advice couples for so like, who are planning to get married? and like, Musician couple or just couple? Any, any, any <laughs> let's not put it in a box. Just for any couple, big, yeah. Any couple, okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, ups and downs are inevitable. Okay. You are going to go through hard times, but mm-hmm. those hard times, it's all about, are you okay with the hard times? Are you okay with each other in those hard times? Mm-hmm. Are you, it's a collaboration at the end. It's, it's, a, it's teamwork. You're not two people anymore. Okay. You become one and your mistakes are not just, you know, it's, it's not like, oh, it's your mistake. Even your partner's mistake is like, okay, what can we do about this together? Mm-hmm. You know, everything is a collaboration at the end of the wow. day. Yeah. I'm grateful that he's like that. Yeah. I'm very straightforward in my ideas and I always express myself. Yeah. Thankfully, he receives it very well. Like, and he, like he mentioned, it's a collaboration. Mm-hmm. I never put myself into a position where I'm thinking about a disappointment and I'm heartbroken. You know, every time I'm I'm disappointed, even at things around me, or there's a little bit of a problem in my heart, I always make sure that I speak to him mm-hmm. about it. And he always makes sure that we tackle with it. Yeah. And he always says that we have to face it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it may seem to. uncomfortable right now, but we have to face it. And we have to remember that this is a teamwork mm-hmm. and we will make sure that it's not affecting the love we have. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. have to make yeah. sure that we... Um, we are comfortable talking about it and we will work on it yeah. and we will work on it un- un- until it's perfect, okay. you know. Okay. So I think it's a team, cl- uh, like he mentioned, and I, I, I'm very uh, lucky that he thinks like that and he also actually brought that wow. perspective for me. Zichu, what's the sexiest thing Sanam does without realizing it? PJs. His poor oh, jocks are the sexy. sexiest thing, yeah. Oh. <laughs> super, super. Okay, uh, super Sanam, poor. any quirky habits of Zichu that makes you smile in the middle of a serious moment? Oh my God, she's she can be so random, you know, <laughs> with you anything. Mean? Okay, but I, that's what I love about her. She's, you know, uh, the way she's with animals. Actually, she's the same with me. Actually, actually. <laughs> you know, the, the she makes up words. You uh-huh. know, like like little kunti pom and all those little things. Cute. I find them really cute. Okay. okay. You know? Sorry, any any quirky nickname yeah. for each other? Like, oh no no no. That people don't know. Yeah. Oh, sh- oh yeah. No, 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 no. So, the, it's let's, it's very secret. Let's stay there. Yeah. Okay, don't okay. need to know. Okay. <laughs> uh, describe your ideal date night. Yeah. Ideal like date night, both the sexy and the quirky elements, everything. For me, it's conversations. Okay, I think it. I hardly get to meet him. Yeah. When uh, <laughs> when I get to meet him, you know, oh. I think all the conversation and uh, he's very spiritual. If people don't know, all the kind of uh, conversations that I have with him is all fruitful. Every time I speak to him, I'm more humbled by the whole situation, and I always look forward to such conversations with him. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's if whenever she plays video games with me <laughs> oh my god it's like I've achieved something so big in life you're a big gamer people need to know that right huh? like oh big, yeah. big time game I've always gamed like since my childhood but I've so. beat you in Tekken many times okay. just to let you know maybe I'll let you beat <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. now it's no. married <laughs> no, 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 no. no I think he's just being a little bit um, no no she, she plays yeah, I actually to be honest, beat him yeah. in oh, Tekken wow. many wow, times wow. Never, we, we don't know about it okay <laughs> fast fast never have I ever used a cheesy pickup line on my partner just for fun I've never you? I okay. have always I always do okay I mean, never have I ever sent a flirty text to the wrong person accidentally no oh, I have I have uh, my the group that I have it's Summer Venky Kesha <laughs> okay there yeah. I send <laughs> missing you so much baby and then deleted immediately but uh, then they all that everyone's all like shit okay uh, last uh, what do you find about uh, what do you say about Naga musicians yeah. you oh my music. god I have so, so much to say firstly uh, Alubo I feel you know people look up to you and the first person in fact that I got to know about like a musician is you and not I think the whole country knows you all the musicians yeah. in the country yeah. uh, know you and you, I feel, are you hold that responsibility to, you know, lead people uh, in, in the right direction. And you've, you've, in fact, opened a huge space for people to now be out there and express themselves musically. Uh, honestly, the musicians in Nagaland are so amazing. Mm-hmm. And in fact, one of the uh, competitions I just during COVID was the, the Guild, something musical Guild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... and you know, in that I saw so many amazing... He was one of the judges. Yeah, yeah, I was one of the judges. Yeah. So, you know, there were so many amazing musicians and I was just sharing that with all my uh, friends and, you know, I'm like, just listen to them. This, you know, people do this for the love of music. Mm. They're not doing this 
people here are not doing this for like oh, I need to make money yeah. you know because people love music that's why they do it and you can feel it and uh, abdon is the one that i you know yeah. I, that really he really mm-hmm. caught my attention mm-hmm. and i was like oh my god what a simple humble and it you feel his music you feel his lyrics okay. he's always blown away by the kind of musicians that we have here oh, and yeah, he is always yeah. saddened by the fact that we don't have much exposure yeah. Yeah. because he thinks that if all the people collectively from nagaland comes to bombay they're going to blow the industry my goodness yes yeah he always mentions mm-hmm. that and i think it's Thanks so important yeah. that we address it's a lot this. Yeah. yeah i mean he's speaking so, so highly about us uh is there any uh, there's a question is there any artist you would like to collaborate from nagaland this is a question from like people you know? yes there's so many in fact i've Viray and I connected for that, okay, you know, okay. to collaborate. But it's been eight nine years. We've tried yeah. so hard. It's it hasn't happened yet, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, I really want it to happen. It'll yeah. happen uh, okay, when it has okay. to. And Abdul definitely. Okay. You know, I would love. I told him already. And Alubo, we have to. Okay. Yeah, we've been talking about some <laughs> yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, so yeah. We, we. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for me, uh, I would love to do a worship song with you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For me, I would love to, you know. Sing a worship song. Not you. The three of us. That'll yeah, be nice. Three of us singing yeah. together. You know. Like, yeah. So yeah. Uh, let's pray about it and let's do it. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. That's it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do another seminars. It's it's a podcast. You can go longer. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Any future plans now? Yeah. Now you're married. Okay. Where are you planning to settle here, Bombay? Yeah. It's a mix. I would say you know her. her I told her family, you know, you don't have to feel like you know she's going away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In fact, my family can still feel that I'm going away. Jamai you know? <laughs> 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 raja. <But honestly, laughs> so, but honestly, it's it's uh, it's equ- going to be equal because okay. yeah. I okay. love spending time. I think time uh, the yeah. only thing why. Uh, we consider staying in bombay also because of the connectivity the connective flight. flights yeah. yeah because he's It's always traveling connected. everywhere sometimes i don't even know which country or which state he is in sometimes i just call him and like oh, i don't know wherever you are just be sure you're fine and you come back home safe okay that's the kind of conversations we have sometimes so are you going to be housewife or are you going to do music or you know? well i just released a music video so i yeah, don't I think i will be a housewife so we we really want you to you know no i think uh, uh, yeah i'm very uh, I think I'm more passionate than him. Yeah. Kidding. In terms And of music, music. And then music. Uh, with his blessings now over you, we believe that uh, more doors will open. And yes, I, I, I would love to encourage you. I said before also to I'm, do Hindi. Also. I'm a kind of person. I want to see how being a housewife is a beautiful thing. I believe, but yeah. I just feel like uh, along with being a housewife, I think I would love to explore more you of should, my capabilities. Should, yeah. And I don't think I can stay, you know. Like that. I can. I Without. think we can find a good balance between being a housewife, yeah. house husband, house- homemaker. Uh, yeah, really, I feel that you know because yeah. I love to do the housework. I'm a very uh, homely mm. person. Homely But, person. Yeah. <laughs> so I love cleaning. I love washing the dishes, and I'm not kidding. These Thank are God. things that I think every human should know anyway. Yeah, it's not true. specific to women how yeah. people generalize. So, but I feel uh, we all should be doing that because it's basic. Mm-hmm. It's basic. So now you are like almost naga. You like. Yeah. Oh, How Punjabi are you? <laughs> And his family calls me that I'm more Punjabi than he is. Oh, like awesome. people call him that he is more Naga yeah, yeah, than yeah. I am. So I think it's uh, we're both beautifully inculcating into each mm-hmm. other's culture, and it's just beautiful that I get to know so much about the Punjabi culture as well. His family is awesome. Mm-hmm. Every time we meet, we're always dancing bhangra, all of these things. You know, it's just so much more fun. And I like to talk to them in this typical uh, Punjabi accent sometimes, mm-hmm. and they love it. She even and sings Punjabi really well. Just, just something will happen in the future. And he always he always tell me that my Punjabi is better than my Hindi. Wow, so I really? think it's a good sign. <laughs> Maybe made for each other. That's it. <laughs> anyway, with that, uh, yeah, it's a podcast, but I need to go. Okay, I have yeah, other works to do in life also. So yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I know you're 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 you're, you're, you're a jobless person, but I have no time. <laughs> Please tell everybody to. S- we just started our YouTube channel, Sanam and yeah, yeah, Zucho. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yeah. Sanam and Zucho. Okay. Please, everybody, subscribe. Yeah, link is channel. there. Link the, is there. Uh, yeah. Your description. So make sure you subscribe. We didn't talk about the song. We never spoke about it. Yeah. We never talked about the song. We should talk about the song. I I asked you the question. You did not. You dodged it. Like you were. We dodged it. Yeah. You should ask like एक बार एक तक तो ना like इन्हें हो दिले तो एक तक खुद ले अच्छा ये जरूर करो ना अच्छा बोलो बोलो जो लेक क्या बोलने बोलो तेरे में तुम बियाला जो इंटरव्यू वर्ड हो I I reject this question I guess <laughs> yeah but it's a beautiful song yeah we uh, for those who don't know they, they released the song no, 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 properly uh, shut up <laughs> <laughs> They released this song during the wedding, and that is a beautiful song, beautiful music video, uh-huh. and yes, I wish there was a kissing scene in the video, Hi, but yeah. there was no because they were not married then. Yeah, exactly. 
Now next music video, we're gonna. Uh, I'm, Woo! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Please make sure that you go and watch the video. Any message that you want to talk to my, uh, tell my viewers before we end up the this talk. Definitely, show. everybody, please don't judge Alobo for anything but his <laughs> love for people. Really, Thank you. Thank he's you. he's a he's an amazing human being, and uh, you guys don't know that yet. Okay, everybody who doubted him during the controversy, <laughs> please don't be like that. Okay, you gotta hear the whole story. Okay, and Thank other you. thing, we love you guys so much. Yeah, that's. We are all here with the purpose. The purpose is love, and that's what we need from you guys as well. And let's only talk about love and nothing else. Again, for the music video, everybody watch Saath Rahe Tu Mere Ham music video on our YouTube channel called Sanam and Sucho, and please subscribe. And that's why we met, and that was released on our wedding day. So yeah. it's very special to us, and we hope you guys like it. Yeah. And uh, let us know if you guys like it. And thanks to Alubo for giving us a platform to promote our music. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for taking our time. Yeah, jokes apart, uh, it's after one year running after you guys. <laughs> I got the time finally. But I'm so honored. Uh, the team is so grateful to both of you. And we wish you the best. And uh, we wish you a lot of happiness. And Thank uh, you. as uh, Minister Along said, 17 children. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're going to say bye-bye. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you soon. God bless. Bye. bye.